Yes, sister. Now we can. Praise God. Yes. Teresa. Yeah. <laughs> Praise right. Jesus. Praise Jesus. Okay. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we come before you today. It is you who invited every sister here to be present in this session. Let our hearts be changed and renewed. Strip away our weaknesses and fill us with your grace and mercy. Hold us close to you, Lord, and surround us with your love. Grant us the grace to be attentive to your word, broken by Brother Thomas. Unveil our eyes and open the shutters of our ears and mind so as to make this teaching simple and easy to understand. We are your handmaids, Lord. May it be done to us according to your word. Lord, help us to use the authority you have given us and to resist the devil. Help us to love and forgive our enemies. We surrender all the technical gadgets today into your care, tender care. And we make this prayer in the mighty and the glorious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Praise God. So, my dear sisters, welcome again. Praise Jesus. What a beautiful day. It's raining here in Perth today. But anyway, God is good. We always have showers of blessings. So, any testimonies today? Anything we have to share? So I just wanted to share something, okay? You, you know, we said everywhere we uh, know the truth, we see freedom, we experience the freedom. So uh, two, I think two, three days ago, one of our uh, boy from the youth, they are well aware of the word, they know everything. But he suddenly messaged me, he's on the ship. So he messaged me saying, I don't know what is happening. I can't, I can't do, I can't work anymore. I just can't work anymore, blah, 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 all these negative things. And I said to him, uh, you know, when, if we talk, I don't want to hear about your pain. I just want to hear about Jesus. So when I, I made time for him and we spoke to him, I spoke to him and I said, uh, uh, you know, where does the thief come to steal? Thief comes to steal where there is lots of treasure. So thief knows what you have inside you, right? And you shouldn't be, you should be very vigilant. You shouldn't be attentive to those lies that uh, the thief brings to you. So this is how our conversation started. And then he was telling me in detail, I said, ah, 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 we already spoke about this. No complaints about what is happening. And we made a prayer and, and we said, um, you know, we did the burning and casting and, and uh, we said, what we had to and we made a prayer and I said okay you know now you just keep thanking God just say thank you Jesus your mercy endures forever thank you for loving me so much thank you I'm the light of the world thank you let there be light that you brought light so all those things I just had to remind him and um, yeah so the next day he rings me and says um, you know it was so beautiful everything was so beautiful and I never felt the pain again so it was all good and I, I just want to say when we know, when we have the knowledge of that word, the Holy Spirit just takes over, you know, and it was just so amazing that he experienced, you know, he knows, but he just had to be reminded, just be reminded. It had to be this near his ears. And yeah, so today, no message. Yesterday, he messaged me saying, I never felt this better. I feel so much better. You know, thank you for listening to me. So God is good. You know, whenever someone tells us little knowledge that we have, if we share it, it just works. The Holy Spirit does the wonders. We don't have to do anything. It, the Holy Spirit just takes over. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So anyone else has anything to share? Praise God. Not this. Praise God. Okay. Um, Praise anyone the have Lord, anything sister. to share? Praise My the Lord, Lord. Fatima. 
I want to glorify God. I just want to testify, sister, for the glory of God. My mother was uh, in a very critical condition past 30, 13 days. And doctor had given me only 24 hours that he had said that they couldn't guarantee what would happen. And mom had got infection and her blood count. In her blood count also she got infection and it was like almost 35,000. And they had told me that it, they couldn't tell me what would happen to her. But I trusted God. I kept my mother in prayers. And of course, you also prayed in the Zoom. And today, my mother is out of all those, uh, in that infection which was in her blood. And she was supposed to be discharged today. And tomorrow, my mother is going to be discharged from the hospital. Although she's going to be continued to be on oxygen, but I believe she's not going to be on oxygen for long because God is already healed her and she's going to, she's, I believe that she's breathing normal. Amen. I thank God for everything he's doing in our lives. I give him all the glory and honor because he alone deserves the glory. Yes. There is nothing impossible with our God. With men, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. All glory to God. Thank you, sister, for the prayers and always being my support and being there for me whenever I needed your love. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Fatima. You are a mighty, mighty warrior. You know, you are chosen for the for the most high purpose of God. The creator has called you. He's chosen you. He's set you apart for a very special purpose. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Jesus loves you, my darling. Okay, Mary, are you there, Baba? Yes, you, Sanya. You can take uh, over. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I was listening to Sister Fatima's... Um, testimony and I um, uh, you know I saw how she held on to the word of God believing what the word says and not and not what the situation said to her which is the key that is where when miracles happen isn't it Sister Fatima beautiful that's an encouragement and a reminder yes. for oh, each God. one of us how we should hold on Yes, and Sister Fatima, thank you for sharing um, so that, you know, we are reminded as well how we can come and testify this to everyone and how we can change the circumstance. Amen. God is good, Sister. He's always yes. faithful. If we keep trusting Him and without yes. wavering in our faith. Yeah, exactly, Sister. But we need to be reminded by someone uh, like you, who comes up and shares a testimony. So it's. Yes, this it's 13 all... past 13 days had been like a roller coaster for me, sister. But God has been my strength all the time. He it's really amazing. gave me so much strength to stand firm in my faith. It's only God, sister, who's, who's with you all the time. And He gives you that strength to go through it. He never yes. leaves us. Although we go far from him, but he's always with us in that mm -hmm. situation. All glory yes, to God. Thank all you, glory sister. to God. Yes, I can see you know, how you're holding on to just his word, him. Him, like, and, and where you're getting the strength from to go through whatever you're going through. It's coming from him. And that's, where, that's how you're getting stronger and stronger. All glory to God. Thank you, sister. If anyone else would like to share a testimony, I can see Brother Thomas has uh, uh, come in as well before he starts. Anybody would like to share anything like how Sister um, shared with us her testimony? Thank you, Brother Thomas, for joining us. We are all ready to um, listen to what God has speaking through you. Great Jesus, I just had to say something before brother starts. You know, this is about one of my friends. Now we all, now Fatima, I was reminded because of Fatima's thing. So this man, he told me, 
that uh, he's from here, he's from Perth. So he said he was um, unwell. Unwell means what he was shaking, you know, he, he was just shaking. He couldn't sit. He was just shaking. He could lie down, but he could not sit. So he went to the doctors here and the doctor said there's nothing. And, uh, you know, they didn't do it. They did all the investigation. There was nothing. Brother in Mumbai said, no, 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 don't worry about that. You just come to Bombay. And he made an appointment for him in the hospital and everything. And he called in there. Now, he's got little grandchildren. He's got the business going. And now he, his wife can't go because of the grandchildren. So imagine, he just, you know, sometimes we think because we are in the word, we meditate the word. These people don't know the word. They only say, God, help me. Mama Mary, help me. This is, this is his state. So anyway, he just took the flight. Imagine that. So brave and so bold. He just got in the flight. He um, said, Lord, you take care of me. I put all my care in your hands. You know, God knows what he would have said it. But now imagine he has to sit he has to go to from here to go to Bombay. It's about 10, 12 hours with, uh, um, you know, uh, stay um, um, change over in uh, Singapore or Malaysia. I don't know how he went. But he, because he said that, he said, Jesus, help me. You are the only one. God knows what he said. But as he got into the flight, now he's already thinking, I can't sit. He's already thinking that, but as soon as he got in the flight, he that flight, four seats were empty. Oh so God. he didn't <laughs> sit, he lied down. Mm. He was lying down. <clears throat> and uh, so, imagine, and he said both, the whole journey, he was so comfortable and he was so, you know, he didn't feel it. But the moment he landed Bombay, he said, God, I'm in your hands. Thank you for bringing me here. And now I did not know how bad he's one of our friends, but I did not know how bad it was. But when another friend told me, I happened to call him and I said, see, this is nothing but a second chance. You always ran out of, uh, uh, ran after money. You always ran digging for money. You had no time for yourself, no time for anything. And when you, when I would share the word with him, because he always complained of migraine and things like that, you know, when I used to try and mm -hmm. tell him, how God loves him. He would say, I know, I know, I know. As if he doesn't want to listen to God's story anymore. So yesterday I was telling him, you see, this is a second chance. You made money all your life. And now you see what God did. You must have just said one word, help me. But see what he did for you. He made sure that he was safe. He went in the hospital. He was there in the hosp Bombay hospital for two months. He just got back last week and he said now he's even driving. He couldn't even sit on the driver's seat. He couldn't drive a car. Imagine how how a man could be so, you know, feel that, what feeling he could be. So he said he's driving a car. He's doing so many things. I said, you know, I can't tell you much. I'm just telling you that God loves us so much. Even though we run away from him, he always comes looking for us. And I said, you got a second chance now. Don't let go of the chance. Just imagine you are chosen. You are called and God is coming, looking for you, seeking you, going hunting for you. But you have to think about it. And, you know, just remind yourself and say, Lord. So I told him to say, Jesus, I love you. I said, you do, because he's not a person to sit and read the Bible or anything. I said, every time you say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, I love you. I said, that's enough. That will create change your mind. That will renew your mind. That will get, get you closer to that love, you know, that you're calling for. So praise God. So I thought I'll share it, you know. Praise God. Praise thank Jesus. You, Even though just to remind not in the word, he just said it in his own. <clears throat> yeah, praise God, Mary. Go ahead. <laughs> Just a reminder again, God is always waiting for us with open arms. We just have Amen. to Amen. say yes to him, to just say, yes, Lord, yes. here I am. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, sister. So beautiful. Thank beautiful. you, Mary. 
And over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, over to Brother Thomas. Yeah, I think it's, he's all ready yeah, to he's start. Here. Thank you, Baba. Praise God. Okay, let's begin. Make a small prayer, loving Father. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, <clears throat> for this session. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful plan that you have for us. Thank you for the sacrifice on the cross. Thank you that you have chosen us. Thank you that you have anointed us, forgiven us. Thank you that you have written our name in the book of life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us so much, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for today's session and the revelation and the understanding that you are giving all of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all glory and honor. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, so, you know, I when I started that uh, YouTube channel, you know, when I was preaching, uh, my intention was uh, to kind of, you know, cover uh, different uh, study topics. But then, you know, it's turning, like, I started preaching again, like, you know, taking a topic. And, and I wanted to go, like, you know, so take a topic of sin. So sin has so many uh, interlinked or, you know, so many subtopics to it. There is guilt. How does a guilt force you? There is uh, consciousness, you know, sin consciousness, righteousness, forgiveness, salvation, savior, uh, the condemnation, there are so many things in that. So I started studying that. So how I did is uh, a word, like for example, I studied on prayer. Okay, So everything in Bible, pray, prayed, uh, intercession, supplication, um, I started searching for those. Okay, and then uh, filtering the scriptures that I want, which was related to like which was teaching me something and I could learn something, okay? So I think I finished with the prayer, prayer, supplication, intercession, and then I studied on grace and law. Uh, so everywhere, you know, there is a word grace and there is a word law. So I, I note it down. And of that, uh, you know, so of that is what I'm, I was like... Um, Basically, I have taken down those scriptures. So that's what I intend to, uh, you know, share. But that was not happening. But by God's grace, you know, it's it's happening again. So uh, I will share today about prayer. Okay. Now, when I say prayer, you need to understand it's not asking. Okay. Now, the teaching that we believe in, in that, you know, you have already received it, you need to uh, believe that. But I'm not talking about asking. Okay. Most of the people think I pray for one hour. And what do you pray? I pray for my son. I pray for my job. I pray for my family. I pray for my health. I pray for my this. So basically, it's all about your need. I'm not talking about that. Okay. Um, I would categorize prayer into four categories mainly. One, your prayer towards God, okay? Two, your prayer towards other, okay? Three, your prayer for your personal needs. And fourth is, we call it a warfare or towards Satan, okay? Towards God is your thanksgiving, your praise, your worship, your fellowship, your connection with the Lord. Acknowledging Lord, meditation, you know, thanking and praising and have a great having a great time. That's one of the best and amazing way of praying, I believe. Okay. Praising, thanking, worshiping, fellowshipping, connected with the Lord, you know, acknowledging him, uh communing, uh, like you know, communicating to him. That's an amazing way. When you pray for others. That's, you know, people who need, uh, especially the Bible says, pray for the authority, pray for the church, the leaders, okay, uh, pray for, uh, you know, uh, those who are persecuted, pray for the kingdom of God, the laborers, you know, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. We have employee and we have directors and uh, vice president and all of that, but the laborers will actually labor in the vineyard of God are very few. So we are asked to pray for that. Um, you know, we pray for someone who is in trouble so that God would bail him out of that trouble. But sometimes, you know, he should go through those things. So you should know, like, you know, 
when you should pray for that person so that he gets bailed out of that situation and when you should allow him, you know, so that he comes out a different person. The third category would be your personal needs. So, you know, praying for your needs, guidance, protection, um, then, you know, overcoming temptation, all your needs, uh, all this comes into your personal needs. And that is when we apply that principle of faith. Okay, so I believe that I have received it in the spiritual realm. It is already done deal. And that's when I thank God that I have already received it. But that applies only in the category of personal needs. Uh, I don't say that, you know, I've already, th I believe that I've already thanked God. So I'm not going to thank him anymore. That doesn't apply there, okay? Believing that I've already received it applies only in the one category, and that is your personal needs, okay? The fourth category is uh, warfare, like, you know, fighting against the devil. You are rebuking him. You're binding him, you know? Um, earlier when I, I started to come for the prayer meeting, I think majority of the prayers were like, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And majority of the prayer where everybody was screaming and shouting and excited, when all kind of these kinds of prayers were happening, like I bind you in the name of Jesus. And, and Satan was not even in the picture at that time. It was maybe some other reasons. But, uh, but there is a place in the Bible where it says, you know, submit to God and resist the devil. Okay, so resist is also your act of faith and also sometimes in your prayer or, um, you know, you what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Okay, so there are times when you see the enemy uh, when, you know, he was uh, tempting Jesus. So he replied him with the scriptures. He replied him with the scriptures two times. And on the third time, he says, get behind me, Satan. Uh, one more time when, you know, he was going to be crucified and Peter said, you know, I will not allow this. So at that time also, he said, get behind me, Satan, because he knew that he was coming on the way to hinder him. Okay. So this, what I've done is basically going through each and every scriptures, which talks about prayer. Okay. And I'm going to take one point or one learning of those scriptures, one or multiple, but basically learning something so that we can improve or change our prayer life. Okay. So let's start with Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Sorry, 6, verse 5. Is someone sharing the screen? Uh, screen? Brother, brother, I don't have Eastwood. I have Bible Gateway, which has the ads coming up. Is that okay? Or I can share. It's not a problem. Am I, like, can you make me co-host? Oh, so, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes, brother, sorry. Yes. Okay, I will share my screen. Okay. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Okay, here he's saying, when you pray, you shall not be like a hypocrite. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corner of the street, and they that they may be seen of man. Verily I say unto you, they have their rewards. So now when Jesus is talking about this entire chapter of Matthew 6, he talks about worry, he talks about prayer, how to pray know where to start it is interesting that he doesn't say you know do this way and start with this or you know use this phrase or address this way the first thing he says how not to pray and that is i believe most important thing okay what is he teaching them he's saying um you shall not be like a hypocrites. And why hypocrites? Because they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corner of the street. Now, if you see their motive, okay, their motive is to show. Their motive is um, basically boasting and they want to show off. 
how spiritual they are and and honestly i would admit there are times when we do that i mean i might have done that so when you are praying nicely you know and somebody says amen praise the lord brother so you were supposed to finish it you will you will extend it or it's like you know somebody is appreciating or you know uh, responding to your prayer then it goes on a little longer length and um, so the first most important thing when you pray okay what god is looking at not your words how fluent you are in whatever language you are speaking are you saying i i heard uh, some people saying you know they have a habit of saying uh, okay okay so I, i'm going there okay so i'll have food okay so in every sentence they'll use that word okay so first time when that person started or first time when i heard him so he is saying to god um, you know <laughs> is using that word now when you hear it it doesn't sound really you know proper or it sounds a lit- little uh, different because he's talking to god and saying okay okay uh, and and that's how he was praying okay so basically what one second my mom is calling just give me one second sorry i mean she needed something so okay so uh, what god is looking at the first important thing in your prayer is sincerity your motive you know most of the people if you say and and you are the best judge for your motives okay uh, example i i mean you know i am at a mumbai station a uh, local train station and let's say i have a car or a bike let's say i have a, a bike okay and i see an or i have a car okay and i see an old uh, auntie you know and she's struggling and i just go and ask her like where should i drop you can i drop you somewhere she says beta please you know help me and then i take her and i drop her to the place now here i have taken her from one station to a house and i dropped her this is called helping my motive was to help her but if i see a young girl attractive girl and she is on the same station stays in the same locality as that auntie was now here i may not have a true motive of helping her it may be something else the action is the same the distance is the same but the motive is different so god is not looking at your action but more but he is looking at your motive your sincerity and you need to understand and and honestly i will admit this when i was you know new in the lord that time i was so sincere so sincere while i was praying while i was listening to the word of god while while i was attending those prayer meeting singing to the lord i was so sincere then they gave me a title and the title called brother so i was like nobody knew me i was mr nobody knew me and my name was changed to brother so everybody started knowing me now i became a brother and and the way i would act or the way i would you know greet people earlier nobody knew me so i would go and say praise the lord now my way of greeting people meeting people completely changed because i am thinking something else and that's what god is looking at your heart and is looking at your sincerity your motive are you sincere or are you like you know just going through the motions of doing those things once i visited one prayer meeting and i saw a young boy just touched by the lord he was a missionary i think it is called uh, the one who works on the road and digs the hole you know uh that's a very hard working job in india i think they are the most hard working people in india so he was like that you know a, a worker and he was i think 18 19 years old and i saw the love of god the sincerity in his heart 
and the way he was crying and praising and worshiping it it is not necessary that you have to cry but you know i could see the sincere heart of that boy and at the same time in the same prayer group i saw another man maybe around 32 to 35 years old and i saw god had touched him just recently i think he came back from a retreat or somewhere you know and he was in love with god and that sincere cry or sincere songs while he was praying and singing and i saw the action of the hands you know one was waving his hand the other one was lifting his hand and i was so impressed and i was praising and thanking god now, in the same prayer meeting, I went after maybe one, one and a half year later, or maybe two years after. Now, that young boy who was 17, 18 years old is promoted as a leader, a youth leader in Hindi group of that prayer meeting. And that man who was 30 to 35 years, now he's become a, a one of the leader of the group. Okay. And I saw them. Now, one is still waving the hand, the other one is still lifting the hands, but the sincerity was not there. I'm not judging them, I'm learning from them. Like, we can get drift away. We can drift away from the core, from the basic foundation of our relation, of our Christian faith, of our relation with God, and that sincerity. You know, I cannot be perfect. I cannot be purely holy today. I cannot be fully um, perfect in every area of my life, but I can be sincere. And that's what Jesus is saying. God does not like hypocrites. And you should see the way they, they pray. And, and in prayer meetings, they have a tone of praying. Actually. Oh, God, I thank you so much. And in Hindi, they call it like, you know, Oh, God, we thank you, praise you. I mean, they pick up the tones, they pick up the motions, the hands waving and everything. But what they need to, or what we need to understand, it's your sincerity. It's your sincere heart that God is looking at. Not your babbling, not your sounding, how you sound so, you know, melodious or how you sound. Nothing of that sort. Only your sincere heart. So when you praise, when you worship, when you come before God, come with a sincere heart. Once um, <laughs> I came to the Lord, uh, I was like, you know, having a good time with the Lord. And, and I said, Lord, okay, a couple of uh, things the Holy Spirit reminded me. Once um, I just came back and, and, and I was having a fellowship with the Lord. I was having a time of, you know, fellowship with God. And I said, God, um, like Holy Spirit, what do I pray? Uh, what do I pray on? Like, how do I start? What do I do now? And the Holy Spirit says, you know, um, how a child tells everything that happens in the school to the mother, you're going to tell me that. And I started telling from the time I got up and, you know, and actually it happened two to three times I could have died. I could have been hit by a vehicle or a, a bike or a truck. Three times it happened on that day. And I saw the favor of God. I saw the blessing of God, you know. Things really, really God's favor, man's favor, blessing, promotions in that day itself. And I started remembering and telling the Lord. And you know what I was doing? I was crying the whole time. Whole time. Just a memory of what God did to me on that day. It was such a beautiful time with the Lord. It was such a beautiful time. Now, one more time when I was having a fellowship with the Lord and, you know, <laughs> the Lord spoke to me and he says, you know, today you are coming to me like my son because you come like a brother, you come like an intercessor, you come like a father praying for others, you come like a leader praying for your group, praying for the people, you come like a, you know, a leader, you come like a father, you come like this. But today, after a very long time, you're coming to me like a child like my child, and you are talking to me. So, this is very, very important. He says, you should not pray like a hypocrite. What is a hypocrite? The actual Greek word for hypocrite is an actor. The one who doesn't mean things, the one who in his heart is something else, and on his mouth something else. There is no connection between his heart and his mouth. Okay, and that is the reason why God is very angry or he does not like 
people people telling lies i think you know slapping someone hitting someone damaging someone stealing something you know you're actually physically um physically damaging them physically you're harming them but when i tell a lie who is getting harmed suppose if i say xyz lie who is getting harmed in that what is wrong with that anyone can say like wow, what is wrong in telling lies anyone wants to add like what is wrong with lie telling a lie it's a sin i know but why it is a sin when we okay. lie we ourselves are not at peace brother correct that's your conscience is condemning you that's a after result but my question is what is the logic why is god telling not to lie If I say it's not the truth, it's just the meaning of a lie. So I'm not sure if that's the right answer. Correct, but what is a harm in that? Is what I'm saying. Like suppose if I beat someone, I steal, you know, their money, I do something wrong to them. It's actually I'm harming them. But what about lie? We're going against God because Jesus is the truth. Exactly, but. Wow! What did God think about lie, and He applied that law or that commandment? Why is it so important for Him that people should not lie? Okay, this so is my Satan understanding. Is Sorry, Satan is a father of lies, and it's, absolutely, uh, yeah, correct. Father, like you him. are cooperating with him. him. Yeah, correct. Yes. That's following right, him. and that's how he works. But what, according to what uh, my understanding is, that there is a connection of your mouth to your heart, an invisible connection. And if you are a habitual liar, you will never be sincere, especially in your talk. And I've seen some people who are, um, you know, the one who tells lies or uh, what do you call that? Uh, Chamchagiri, what do you call it in English? the one who always an s minister and keeps you know praising you gossiping gossiping not gossiping like someone if i'm praising someone who is not actually that flattery ha ah, flattery yeah correct the one who flatters it's called flattery the, yeah correct flattery uh, the one who flatters uh, or the one who is a habitual liar his connection with his heart or heart and mouth is broken now if that same person who is a flatterer or a habitual liar if he thinks if he preaches if he worships you will never find that sincerity in his preaching you will never find that he is talking from his heart he is talking from his throat from his voice but the connection of your heart with your mouth is very very important i mean this is what my understanding is but what i'm trying to say is it is very very important that you need to be sincere before god just be what you are don't try to show off to god you know he knows each and everything you are not a big uh, you know compared to this brother or that sister you you are who you are and that's what god knows about you so be sincere when you come in front of him just talk to him you know uh and if i should say this but um, you know i i was in love with a girl and i wanted to marry her but god revealed his will that she is not the one and then imagine the kind of prayer life that i had with god <laughs> the kind of questions that i was asking i was very clear that she is not the one for me and i'm talking to the lord about you know will i get married to her and imagine the kind of words that i was using and you know i was saying the way jesus said you know let this cup uh, you know let this cup pass not my will but your will so i said like i am sure i know that you know i have a um, kind of a conviction that it is god's will but i was trying to convince god to change his mind in this plan but whatever i was doing i was talking to him sincerely i was talking because he knows my heart he knows me i was not trying to hurt uh, you know um, showcase something or so what i'm trying to say is have this thing in your life 
be sincere when you talk to the Lord. Be sincere in your prayer. Be sincere when you worship, when you praise, when you listen to the word of God. And your sincerity, that's what Jesus is saying. Don't pray like a hypocrite. Hypocrite is an is a, a, a actor. It's something in his heart and something else is in his mouth. And that's what God does not like. Okay, so number one thing when you are having a relation, prayer relation with God, two things you need to understand or two things you need to have. One is your sincere heart and second is your motive. Motive. You know, what is your motive? So when I was praying for my, my you know, that I should get married to that girl whom God is. My motive was obviously, you know, selfishness and I was not willing to surrender in the plan of God. So two things, sincerity and motive. Okay, now this is what we are learning from one scripture. I think uh, let's go to the next one here. But thou, when thou prayest, entered into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to your father, which is in secret, and your father, which seeth in the secret, shall reward you openly. Now, notice here Jesus talking. He was in love with his father. He had a great, great connection, relation, fellowship with his father. And he is teaching them how to pray. But uh, I believe he used that word uh, purposely, your father, your father, who seeth in the secret, and your father will see it in the secret, will reward you openly. Okay, so here he's talking about three things which are very, very important. Okay, one is your relation. He does not say my father, he does not say his first father. It does not say their father. It says your father. The secret of your relation, your fellowship, your prayer life is your relation. So basically, uh, your, the secret of the prayer life is the relation that you have with God. The relation, the connection that you have with God. And that's what he's saying, your father, not my father, not their father, not his father, not her father. It is your father who sees you in secret. Your father will reward you openly. So, your relation with God. Okay? Now, second thing you need to know, if he is your father, then you are his child. And if you are his child, then you get his authority. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. Okay? Hindi mein bolte, in Hindi we say, Yeshu ke naam se, in the name of Jesus. Hum ye nahi bolte, Yeshu hamare kaam se. It's not by my words, but by the name of Jesus. Why in the name of Jesus? So we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. To the Father in the name of Jesus. Okay? So, first your relation and second knowing your authority. God has adopted you and he has given you sonship. He has given you the ability, the authority to use Jesus' name. To use his name. Okay? Now, what is, um, so for example, you know, I have borrowed, let's say from XYZ person, I have borrowed, um, let's say 50,000, whichever currency, okay? So let's say Indian Indian currency, 50,000 rupees. So, you know, he's asking me every time and I say, you know, I'm going to get a money like in, like in uh, 15 days and he keeps calling me and I'm saying, I'm going to get another money in 10 days and that's not coming 10 days, 20 days, 30 days and he's keep, he keeps on calling me, okay? Now, what happened is, I told him that, you know, that money which I was supposed to get, I did not get, but I'm getting another 
uh, money from somewhere for that i need uh, so earlier i borrowed 50000 i am i brought, borrowed 100000 1 lakh rupees okay and now again i gave him a deadline i gave him a timeline and i could not i could not meet and he keeps on calling 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 and and he is like very upset and you know he said i gave you money trusting you but you are not fulfilling your promises now let's say i kind of convince him for third time i'm saying you know uh, i i've taken like 150 uh, 150000 from you But last time just give me 200000 2 lakh rupees more in this time i will definitely give you so somehow you know i told him that i'll give you 20 30000 extra so please cooperate with me you know that you know i somehow convinced him and that too i gave him 10 days 20 days you know and i am not giving that money it's been a year he's calling me give my money back give my money back give my money back and i'm not you know so now fourth time i need a money and he's kind of lost his patience he's abusing he said you know i'm going to take you to this i'll i'll take you to the court i will complain about you and all that all that he's very upset with okay he calls me and abuses me and for the time i have to borrow from money what would be the level of confidence that i would have i'm going to ask money from him i'm i'm just walking towards his house what would be the level of confidence that i would have zero okay now what is the reason i don't have a confidence confidence that he will give me because you could not keep uh, up to your promise of returning the money absolutely example there is one more uh, this happens in my life very frequently and um, the one who bought, like you know lend my lender my personal lender is my wife and i keep on borrowing money from her like i say hey, if this is the like just give me 5000 rupees 10000 rupees I'll, once i get my salary i'll return to you now the earlier example i missed let's say three promises but here i must have missed 20 promises like 20 times i told her that you know i'll return your money i'm still not giving the money now i need let's say 50000 today and she has 50000 will she give me money of course she will <laughs> why not the first person and why is uh, the second person here also Because... my accounting and my promises are not uh, fulfilled not done on time there are two things it's your relationship with your wife and there is love as well uh, the first one it's not a relationship it is just a business not a business like it's a give and take no relationship exactly there. exactly yes. and that's what my point is never never ask god based on your accounting because your accounts are never clear <laughs> always ask on the basis of your relation yeah. because sometimes you know we feel that you know suppose you are in the middle of fighting arguing with your wife or husband and you are like screaming and shouting and saying all sort of things and yeah you know this and and you know in the flow how we talk and in the middle of that argument you get a call sister can you please pray for me i'm going through a tough time what's our response oh we forget we in the name of jesus uh, yeah do we yes of course <laughs> Ah. so we are <laughs> so you are not feeling guilty you're shouting and lost your this thing and you said so many wrong things and and not at that time rather but maybe later of course we will think like what are we doing <laughs> okay so why because you are approaching god basis on your relation and not on your account and that's what my point is three things when you go to god one you need to have a relation second you need to have a authority and third thing you need to have a confidence and what i was talking about when i'm approaching my lender and i've not given him money i have confidence but when i go to my wife even if i have not given 20 times return it i return the money i have full confidence that she will give me money and that is because of the relation that i have and not because of my annoy people you know I, i wish that people understand this that you know satan is keeping us trapped is keeping us 
occupied with this thing that you know people who who sin or fail uh, you know who have done something wrong they tend to go away from god like adam did he was hiding from the presence of god but you should be coming with boldness and confidence where you will receive mercy and grace from the lord so remember this three, three things when you are praying your prayer you know three things is your relation with god the authority that god has given you and third thing is your confidence i'll just take you to one scripture and then we we'll come back here we go to romans chapter 4 verse 70 downwards so this as it is written i have made you father of many nation before him whom he believed even god who quickeneth dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope that it might become uh, that he might become father of many nation that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered him in a day when he was about 100 year old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb and here he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to god and here is the pinnacle of your faith the ultimate result the pinnacle of your faith is being fully persuaded what he had promised he was able to perform he had full confidence in the promise of god no doubt not even 1% or 0.1% doubt in his mind he was fully confident fully persuaded that what god had said he is able to perform so have these three things in your prayer relation with god is super super important knowing the authority that god has given you and third is your confidence and this comes with relation this comes with your experience you know this comes with uh, uh, like you know what you have experienced from god that's how your confidence is built okay so uh, remember this is in the name of jesus we ask and not in my works yeshu ke naam se mere kaam se nahi by the name of jesus in the name of jesus and not by my works okay okay let's go to uh, matthew chapter 14 the next point these are just one more scripture i've taken down and you know I was, as i was pondering on those these are the things that i was learning okay when he had sent multitudes away he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone who were those multitudes that he sent them away the one who came for healing the one who came to be delivered the one who came to hear the word okay he sent them away and what he did he went up into the mountain apart to pray apart to pray what did jesus do here it's an act of separation it's an act of separation and prayer is all about an act of separation now what i mean by prayer uh, act of separation see when you are occupied with your work oh i have to deliver that thing and i have to achieve that project and you know i have to do this presentation tomorrow and i have an important meeting and you go in the name of jesus you know i pray and thank you lord and i praise you lord and in your middle of your prayer you know your mind is on your presentation on your important meeting you have not aparted you have not separated you are with your work so you god and your work three of you are praying together you are not alone he was there your anxiety your worries uh, sometimes certain things your friends um, your habits you know most of the people are so glued to their mobiles and uh, 
sometimes watching videos and they think we are watching prayer now we are watching the preaching and we are but yes till you need to set apart a time and just go and thank and praise and worship to him just say thank you lord and you know just when you are alone it is very important like i don't know if this uh, so once i was praying <laughs> and i was in my bedroom for my this is like before my marriage and i was in my bedroom and i was enjoying the presence of god and i saw a fresh uh, fully ripe mangoes there and as i was walking and praying i saw the mangoes and a thought came to my mind that let's go bring the knife and cut the mango and have it i was so tempted i was so attracted you know that desire came so my response was one i quit praying now i go cut my mangoes and i have and i enjoy by the time i i finish my mango and i come for prayer meeting what would be the result there what would happen that the time of fellowship or that enjoy thing or the presence of god what i was enjoying that fellowship it will not come and this has happened many a times like you know i had heard god saying you know at 8:30 uh you know come and spend time or i i get the urge or a desire to go and pray so god there is a a serial is going on or let's say a match only four hours only 30 minutes time god and i'll come it i'll i'll come and i'll i'll you know spend time so 8:30 now it's 9 o'clock now there's one more and just before that 8:30 program could end they are promoting about you know giving the the glimpse of the new program and they're saying this is the most exciting program in the entire year and i don't want you to miss this this is going to be the amazing time amazing program so i'm requesting again god you know you are allowed till 9 o'clock please till 9:30 only only half an hour and by the time i finish my programs on whatever i want to watch by the time i come i don't feel like praying i feel you know that urge or that desire or that emotions you know i it seems like you know it's not there anymore so what jesus did he separated himself he separated from the crowd from the duties from the ministry from whatever he was doing it was important and it was very good but what was more important was to spend time with god or i have seen many people when they are in prayer meeting you know they keep getting messages on insta on their x uh, twitter and and on their facebook and on their youtube they get a notification they get a whatsapp message they get that message that message and they are listening to the word of god they are in the middle of having a fellowship with god so they keep looking at the message and if something interesting something uh, something happen in and they want to go and check that so basically you have not separated yourself so it could be mentally it it could be you know uh, so the more you separate yourself maybe you can start with 10 minutes a time like you know i'm not saying that you have to pray for 5 6 hours just 10 minutes but that 10 minutes is to you and your father alone and then gradually you can increase that time but it is very important that you spend that time with god i'll just show you one more scripture from exodus the 3 and uh, here now moses kept the flock of jethro his father in law the priest of midian he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of god even to horeb so he was on the mountain of god okay uh notice the word mountain of god so he came in today's world if you translate this he came to the retreat house or a prayer meeting then the angel of the lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire the moment he came to the house of god to the place of god he saw an amazing display of god's power out of the midst of the bush he looked and behold the bush burnt with fire and the bush was not consumed it was an extraordinary event or a, a thing or a scene that he saw now he was not satisfied with that that amazing th- thing that happened he said i want to go and find out more and moses said i will now turn us and see this great sight bush is not burnt 
in today's world if you know today's moses see any plant uh, you know on fire and does not burn what he is going to do he is going to take a selfie and upload on all social media he is going to say amazing time with the lord or an amazing encounter with the lord but what he did he turned aside what was he turned aside from he had a responsibility of all the sheep that he he did not come alone he came with you know maybe i don't know the number maybe 50 100 200 300 it could be anything okay but definitely more than 10 20 so he kept them aside he says you be here you know you have your grass but let me go and know what god wants to show so the moment he took his steps and when the lord saw that he turned aside to see when the lord saw that he turned aside to see god called him out of the midst of the bush and said moses moses he said here i am when did god speak to him when god saw that he is going beyond he is turning aside to come closer and that's when god said uh, moses moses and he said here i am okay god is watching us we all are coming to the mount horeb the mountain of god we all are experiencing supernatural things in our life the moment the way moses saw but what is lacking in our life is we are not ready to turn aside go beyond go yonder go beyond go further go deeper in the relation with god we are happy with the supernatural things that we have seen moses was not because if you would have just seen the supernatural uh, uh, the thing that he saw he would have missed the plan of god and from here onwards god will start teaching him sharing to him revealing things and he is having fellowship god is building his confidence he is giving him the authority revealing his name revealing his plan look at the conversation that they are going to have from chapter 3 to chapter 4 god is going to talk to him why i came down i've come you know you will be a deliverer he says i'm weak and he says i'll give you uh, this and all these things is going to unfold in his life the moment he decide to turn aside turn aside the moment he turned aside everything was unfolded the plan of god the beautiful plan of god unfolded in his life so i want to encourage you start a fresh and have a quality time with the lord initially but later you can add quantity but first start with the quality not when you're ringing there and you're typing message oh hallelujah praise the lord with one hand you are sending messages and you are singing and praising and thank you lord thank you jesus and you know that's not setting apart that's not turning aside you are not alone there is your messages your friends god and you three of you are praying that it's not going to work so let's go back to that scripture again uh, matthew chapter 14 i hope like i was little hesitant to talk about this because i know that you people are very good in this and it's like a basic topic but i hope you are learning something on this Brother, yes, definitely. I would say yes. Yes, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, it's yes, really opening our eyes to the story. Praise God. So, uh, what do I learn from this? Is Jesus had a habit of uh, going apart, separation, and separation is very important. It could be your sleep. It could be a laziness. it could be your friends it could be your habits it could be uh, tiredness of your body it could be anything it could be anxiety mentally you are so stressed it could be a bad day in the house uh, in your work in your house it could be anything that is going to hinder and until you go apart until you separate yourself from that situation you will never be able to enjoy that beautiful time with the lord so he set apart and he was alone he set apart himself from all the ministry work from all his disciples otherwise you know if the ministry was done they would have like 
let's go let's have biryani and let's have a fellowship together so jesus and all his disciple going to the restaurant and having a good meal by the time they come back home it will be 12 12 o'clock and they're tired full day they did the ministry and in the evening they had a good meal and all are full now let's go and sleep by 12 o'clock in the night that's not what jesus said as soon as he finished the ministry he set apart to pray because his relation with god was the most important priority in his life okay let's uh, let's go to another scripture Luke chapter 11 was one and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased one of his disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray as john also taught us taught his disciple now he is not learning a method okay i don't want you to learn a method or a tone okay i don't want you to learn a method but i want you to learn the secret what they are saying is not that we want to learn the method but the secret and he is saying teach us to pray teach us to pray as john has taught his disciple so another thing in your life there a secret now what are they praying what are they asking jesus teach us to pray constantly without ceasing and we want to learn the secret secret of praying now again let me make it clear i'm not talking about asking but asking has a lot of secret too okay like believing in the word that god has already healed you but still there are so many aspect to that okay uh, there are so many people uh, break the laws especially the laws of the kingdom of god okay so when you believe that you are healed these are the laws that you have to live by similarly the secret is when you uh, like the god will teach you the secret okay the holy spirit will teach you the secret like i was uh, i was recalling the testimony of benny hin and uh, when he had attended catherine coleman's uh, a big crusade and she like there were a lot of healing to place and he was one of the volunteer and he saw that you know one person who came on the wheelchair got up and started walking and all that and he saw the glory of god he saw the presence of god and all of a sudden she came on the stage and started crying and she started saying that you know uh, don't hurt holy spirit do not grieve the holy spirit for all he, uh, i only have him and i have nothing else i have no one else don't grieve the holy spirit and she started crying and then she finished the crusade now while he was walking coming back it was two hour journey from his place all the time he was pondering over one word do not grieve the holy spirit and he was wondering like how could she have such a close a uh, beautiful relation with the holy spirit that's what he started building he was a young boy of maybe less than like 18 19 years old but what he developed in his life and and his uh, family was like you know opposing him but what he had developed was a time of fellowship with god every day as per his book he says is to spend 5 hours i'm not saying only when you spend 5 hours god will use you i'm not saying that but he started a fellowship with the holy spirit and the secret of his ministry like one time i think he was the uh, you know he was at the right uh, peak he was right at the top the healing and miracle uh, that took place was the fellowship his relation with god okay and that is what is very very important and if you see a common common thing in all the great and great men and women of god one is their relation and the fellowship with god second thing is their humbleness 
third is their faith level and fourth is um you know they are willing to serve like uh they are willing to serve uh, other people sacrificially you know they are willing to serve for god glorifying god so all these things but most important thing is their relation with god and it is for everyone not just a great preachers but it is for everyone and any housewife or anyone you know uh, housewife or uh, house husband you know it's for everyone that we need to spend time in relation with god okay so let's look at uh, one more scripture Luke chapter 18 verse 10 So this is an example of two people praying two men went into temple to pray and one a pharisee and the other one was a publican the pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself uh, god i thank thee that i am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican, he is directly saying to that person, I am not like him. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And then, and the publican, now here is the difference. His focus is on him completely. I do this, I do that. I don't do this. So all throughout his prayer, only one focus of his prayer was he. How good he is, how nice he is, how much is he fasting, how much is he giving. And if your focus is on, on you all throughout your prayer, okay, and another example, let's see uh, what happens here. And the publican standing afar off would not even lift up as much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And then Jesus says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalted himself be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So when your prayer is focused completely on you, you know, it's like uh, all that time you are completely it's like basically self-centered prayer. You know, one one sister we had like long back, uh, we had uh, like used to come regularly and she would cry. So one of the brother, I feel that he made a mistake by saying that you have a gift of tears. But that gift of tears was not a gift of tears. It was uh, self-pity. All the time crying, God, this is wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong. And I don't remember. I'm not judging. I'm just giving you an example. I don't remember when she said, Lord, how awesome you are, how great you are. There's no one like you. You are so awesome. Like, you know, her prayer was completely centered around her problem, but never around God, how great our God is. If you remember that Joshua's prayer, uh, no, Joseph's prayer in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. If you see his prayer, he says, are you not the God who is in control of everything? Are you not the God who gave us a victory against Pharaoh? Are you not the God who has protected us? Are you not the God who can do anything? I mean, his prayer is completely focused on God. And at the last, he says, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Okay, He says, we are helpless against the situation. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So the prayer could be centered around God and his word. A prayer could be centered around you and your situation. A prayer could be centered around God and his word, his promises. A prayer could be centered around you and your problem. What kind of a prayer do we do? And these are all questions for you to uh, you know, ponder over and not to answer. Obviously, because I too lack in so many areas of this. So this is kind of will help us uh, if we ponder on those. Okay, let's look at one last scripture and I'll end here. Uh, Matthew chapter 26 verse 41.
NDR means scripture is the topic is not over, but I think I will stop here, okay, because of the time. Now he says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so we have, have heard the scripture. We, we we know that what it says, watch and pray. Now, in other words, what is he saying? Be alert or be active. Okay, now let's look at your mobile. Okay, most of you has uh, most of you have Wi-Fi at home, but if you are using your internet data, okay, internet data. Now, let's say somebody is sending you messages from India and you are in some other country, okay, WhatsApp messages, and your internet data is off, okay? They're trying to call you on your WhatsApp. They cannot reach you. They're sending you WhatsApp messages. They cannot reach you. Uh, there are some things that you want to do. Let's say, you know, access the internet, access your email, the emails coming to you, messages coming to you, Calls are coming to you, but none of those things are reaching you. Why? Because the button called data, okay, is off on your mobile. Now, the moment you on it, you are getting all the email, uh, email into your account. I'm not saying that email that are sent are not coming into your account, but you are not able to see that in your mobile. WhatsApp messages, you are not able to see it. Uh, emails, you are not able to see it. The calls that you somebody called you, you were not able to receive it. All of this was stopped just because of one thing. And that thing is called data. The moment you on the data, everything starts functioning. But the moment you off the data, everything is flowing towards you, but it's not reaching you. And I believe this is what happens through prayer. God-centered, word-centered prayer. Not self-centered or problem-centered prayer. So your data, uh, what is the button called? What is it called? Can anyone help me? What does it say? Is it data only? Let me look at my mobile. Yeah, my mobile says mobile data. So the moment you on that button called mobile data, you are receiving calls, you are receiving messages, you are receiving email, you are receiving notification. But the moment, like suppose if your Wi-Fi is off and you are outside somewhere, let's say, and your mobile data button is off, it's switched off. But the moment you on it, you start getting the communication. That's what is the spiritual insights, revelation, communication is stopped because of certain things. The moment you're on it, you start getting it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Dada. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I think I will stop here or we have like 10 minutes more. Okay, I think we'll stop here. Is it okay, Sister Maria? Sister Maria is not there. Um, I think so, brother. It's okay to stop now. Okay. Yes. I will unshare my screen. If you have any questions, we can take it. And if no, then anyone, we can end the session. Anyone would like to ask any question about this uh, beautiful teaching that brother shared today? Anyone? Would like to say, add something? Okay. Doesn't look like brother anybody wants to share anything, but I would definitely like to say a thank you for opening my eye to things that I was unaware of in my prayer life that I can improve. I mean, I mean, the Holy Spirit taught you through, taught me through this teaching. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so someone can make a closing prayer and we can end the session. Yes, yes, brother. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you. 
All glory and honor to you, Lord. Thank you for this precious sharing, Lord. Yes, Lord, prayer is not about asking. For you know everything about us. You know every detail about us, Lord. And even before we ask, you know what we need, Lord. Even before we speak, you answer our prayers, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Yesterday we learned, Lord, that prayer is about a relationship with you. We need to come, when we come in prayer, when we come to spend time with you, it's not about how long we pray, Lord. It's not about the words we use, but it's about our heart condition, Lord. It's about our sincerity. Holy Spirit, we ask you to always help us to be sincere, humble, and grateful. Let our, let our prayers, let our relationship be God-centered and not self-centered. And may this teaching reach out to many, Lord. We make this prayer in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Flavia. Yes. Uh, Brother Thomas, somebody on the chat has asked you to share the YouTube link. If you're happy to do that, brother. Yeah.